guys welcome to my view on the Fletcher uh the USS Fletcher K9 uh US destroyer so um in game what can we say about the Fletcher she's pretty much a jack of all trades a master of none so what do we mean what does that say and actually mean uh, when we talk about the Fletcher well she has she has five really nice 127 millimeter guns. They're not the best, but they're nice. They're good. She has two quintuple uh, torpedo launchers mounted amidships with 10 and a half kilometer range. They're not the most powerful torpedoes. They're not the fastest torpedoes, but again, they're just nice. Statistically and numbers wise in the game, the Fletcher is pretty much the destroyer from which all others are measured, are captured against. If you look at the numbers, um, I'll show you the build that I run on this um, after I've gone through the numbers, but we have 5.8 concealment. Again, not the best, but pretty good. Maneuverability. She does 36.5 knots, which is pretty slow. Not too slow, though. Three second rudder shift and a very tight turning circle. It's pretty good. She's got reasonable AA dotted around the ship in multiple mounts, singles and doubles. And again, they're not, it's not brilliant, but it's not bad. As we said, the torpedoes, quintuple launchers, 553 millimeters, 10 and a half kilometers with 73 knot speed, knocking out about 19k damage tops. Again, not the best, but okay. The guns... Five single mount 127 mils with 3.3 second reload, 112 meter dispersion, and 12.9 kilometer range. Again, not the best, but okay. HP, 20,250. Pretty good, actually. Armor layout, it's a destroyer. It's made of, you know, Bakelite and tinfoil. We're not bothered. When you compare her to her peers, she's just an okay ship. But because she's so well rounded in so many different in so many different setouts, she's actually a really nice ship, and she's definitely one of the jewels of the of the American gunboat destroyer line. It's here at the Benham and her predecessor, the Benson, where we see the switch over to more of a torpedo based uh, gameplay. So, how do I set her up? Well, Captain Orville right here has nineteen points, and I'm, a, I'm more of a torpedo boat player, so I specify it more for torpedoes. I stack the torpedo skills with the bog standard destroyer skills that you would expect on a 13-point commander, which would be preventative maintenance, last stand, the survivability expert, the superintendent skill, and concealment. On top of that, I've added the torpedo skills, and for the final two points that I've got, I'm probably going to go with pyrotechnician, it seems to suit these destroyers more. In terms of the equipment that I run, obviously we've got the fully upgraded modules on the ship and I'm running the main armament mod one, the damage control system mod one, the torpedo tube mod one, the engine modification one, concealment, and then torpedo modification two. You do have the option of switching out the engine boost for a rather effective defensive AA should you want to do that but personally, I go with the engine boost. Exterior-wise, she's wearing her stand the standard camo I like to use, which is the New Year streamer. And of course, we've got the stars and stripes with the, uh, with the CC flag and the Alpha Tester flag. What do we know about the ship in terms of her history? Well, the Fletcher class were named after Admiral Frank F. Fletcher, who's a Medal of Honor recipient and the holder of two distinguished service crosses. Uh, and it was the largest destroyer class ordered at the time. Um, they were given a flush deck construction for added, added uh, structural strength. And it was designed to make them less cramped, but with less crew space was available and a raised forecastle. Um, they were designed and constructed around about the early 1939 onwards. Um, now they commissioned 175 Fletchers. It's one of the it's one of the most highly successful and most numerous ships, uh, new, most numerous desire, desire, destroyer class ships 
um, available and there are some still around today not just as museum shares but in actual service i understand as well um they you know there's a lot going for them they were then followed by the derivatives which was the allen m summer and the gearing class um now the allen m summer we actually have in game but it's the yu yang uh, that's what happens to them later on they were passed along to those and the gearing class we we obviously have in game as well in terms of operators the list is massive there was the u.s navy the argentinian navy the brazilian navy the chilean navy colombian navy the hellenic or the greek navy the italian navy the japanese the japanese navy the mexican the peruvian the republic of korea the spanish navy the republic of china turkish navy and the west german navy these were there were hundreds of them very 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 distinguished ships with really 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 distinguished service life left uh, life you know there was only 19 of them lost during world war ii six more were damaged but a lot were either put into reserve or they were scrapped at the end of the war korean war they refitted 39 of them to become more aa why aa uh, involved as well um they were just you know they were just used everywhere and you know in terms of what which ones are surviving we have some very very historic ships surviving two of which uh their names ring very deep with a lot of people you have the uss the sullivans the sullivans obviously named after the fact that there was four brothers uh, who joined the u.s navy and unfortunately all four died um and as a mark of respect um, they name they, there is a USS the Sullivans has been carried on as a name within the US Navy and I think it still exists to this day. There's also the USS Kid. Uh, USS Kid, again, really, really, really well respected ship. Um, historically, you know, it was named after Admiral Isaac Kid, who died on the bridge of his flagship, the Arizona, during Pearl Harbor, um, and you know, it carried on. It, it maintained the name and carried on um so you know the fletcher class is very very it's a historic ship it's a it's a real ship there's plenty you know they were real there's plenty of them knocking about and it's just a very 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 poignant ship and we're very very lucky to have we're very it's very nice that we've got it in world of warships um if you're on the grind you are going to enjoy it um, I'm looking forward to seeing the replay because actually for a change it's not one of my videos you're going to see um, I'm very very lucky that we have Andy the Cupid um, who is a fellow World of Warship streamer and member of Bob's um, with his highest damage he's ever done um, which was actually in the Fletcher so enjoy the replay coming up guys and uh, I'll see you at the end for a bit of a summary and the usual thanks see you soon hey guys so welcome to the replay thank you very much to uh, andy for uh letting me use this replay for the fletcher review um as we can see a really really nice tier 9 matchup here for the fletcher no aircraft carriers the opposition does have an alaska and a riga and a black though in the form of radar ships neptune can obviously run radar but more often than not you'll find them running smoke we're on the uh we're on the two brothers map um, as we can see, one of the things we do know that Andy is running on his Fletcher that is RPF. RPF is a really, really strong destroyer captain skill, um, which becomes even more useful the longer into the game you survive as a destroyer. What it does is it gives you a rough bearing as to where the nearest ship is to you. So as the team thins out on the opposition, it'll stop moving around as much on the screen, but give you an idea where the nearest opposition is for you. A really, really, really nice strong skill to consider along with concealment as your two four point skills on your destroyers. And he's going to head towards the D cap here. And uh, we'll see what he comes up against and how he does. Um, it's a really nice game. It's, it's a really impressive piece of uh, piece of work here. And just thinking, so quite a, quite a nice methodical thinking way of uh, playing destroyers. Slightly different to myself. I'm a little bit more. I, uh, I do kind of try and keep as quiet as possible. So we rejoin Andy back here. Um, 
as you can see, his, uh, his interesting Neptune, uh, camouflage less, going for the full authentic look there, um, is just ahead of him here. And he's not actually pressuring the cap, but as you can see, there is already something in the cap. Um, we don't know what. We can see using the minimap that there is a, Ray, a Riga spotted um, heading towards the cap. So Andy does have to bear in mind that that, that short duration 12 kilometer radar is nearby. The opposition Neptune pops up and immediately deploys his smoke and uh, starts to rain fire on our Neptune as well. Um, the enemy Neptune is actually uh, is actually held by somebody who you may see in my chat and Andy's chat every now. I suck when I lose. Um, so nice to see you in game, I suck, and welcome to uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Andy notices the uh, two different smoke screens going on there out on the actual cap. We're not sure at the minute what actually is taking the cap. Um, so Andy has deployed these torpedoes there, which have range, as you can see, all the way down to just past the G-line. The Riga's radar has kicked in because it's 9.6 kilometers away. Mogador has popped out, so we know the Mogador doesn't have smoke. So it's not the Mogador that's laid that smoke uh, in the cap. So there is another ship, there is another destroyer here. And he's deployed his speed boost. He's trying to pull away from the Riga. The Riga's taking some serious... The Riga is being focused by a few of the ships on his team. He's keeping an eye on his torpedoes as they head into those smoke screens. Remember, smoke screens are torpedo magnets. Don't stay in them or stay broadside in them. Not the best of ideas. The Riga is still pushing forward though. Uh, Lepanto's secondaries are starting to open up. And our Neptune has pulled back a little bit behind the island. As we can see, there's no more radar from the Riga. It is a very short duration, about 25 to 30 seconds at most. So as long as you can make yourself scarce during that time period, you can actually you know, not worry too much. And he's got a really nice reload on his torpedo here. So as you can see, um, they're now back up and ready. Um, so he's having a look to see what he's doing. Based on the potential aspect of where the Riga's going, he's going to launch some a little bit short and some less short, um, with the hope that he's going to be able to take the Riga out. The Riga is still pushing forward on the Jutland, but onto the Lepanto there, which is a strange manoeuvre, um, almost pushing his ship to the point of a way, but it does have a 5km Hydro, so he's already seen those torpedoes. He can now spot Andy as well, so Andy is really hoping that, uh, that the uh, the Riga takes a torpedo and someone kills it quickly and his wish is granted. First blood there to our Neptune and it's a really important kill as well by taking out the opposition's uh, radar. As you can see he spotted the Jutland that's made its way sneakily up the middle but the Jutland's not putting too much pressure yet on the B-cap and our Seattle is kind of hovering around in that area. Not too much to concern ourselves with there. There's a Mogador over the other side, and Andy is now flipping the decap so that he can uh, start to add some more points to the team there. Um, standard positioning here, as you can see, reversing into the cap. His speed boost is on cooldown, but unfortunately, our Neptune has run out of HP uh, and, and has gone back to port. Um, he should have probably run a little bit sooner than the Neptune, unfortunately, and his positioning, as you can see, did give the Lepanto some really good, uh, some really good opportunity. As we can see as well, you can see the RPF flipping around on there. That's giving Andy a kind of idea that the Lepanto is either in the same lo the uh, the Mogador is either in the same location with the ZF6, or he's pushed around the front of the island. He's launched his torpedoes in such a way that if he's behind the island, he might get a torpedo, and if it's in front of the island, he might get a torpedo as well. Um, but as you can see, looking at the reload speed torpedoes here on the actual um, Fletcher itself. You can really fire them very quickly. He's asked for fire on uh, I saw when I lose there because the hydro of the Neptune is a bit of a threat on this side to the uh, to the Fletcher. He's flipped the cap. You can see that there is some focus fire coming in. His torpedoes are at 30 seconds left, but the Jutland has backed into D cap and he's starting to flip it. So Andy is now going to push on the Jutland um, to defend the D cap and see if we can make a bit of a difference here. Now Spoiler alert, we expect a little bit more help from the Seattle than is potentially going to be coming. Um, not sure why, um, is the answer, but we'll let the next uh, sequence of events play out um, so you can see, um, you know, 
I did not what to do and what to do as well. Andy's obviously in the destroyer. Um, he's got a great rate of fire. Um, the Seattle has a nine uh, nine kilometer radar, I think, or so. Very nice rapid firing, 152 millimeter guns in triple mounts that can do a really nice amount of damage to this Jutland. This Jutland shouldn't survive this engagement. And he's going to come around the corner. There's the Jutland. And he opens up with his guns. He's going to get a couple of hits into it. Some defended ribbons, some incaps, fire his torpedoes. Now, the Jutland has a 3.2 kilometer uh, defensive hydro. And at this point, the Seattle should be popping his radar to help. And that's what Andy's asking for. He's saying, come on, the guy smokes. Radar, let's get him. But for whatever reason, the Seattle ignores him and just carries on his merry way. Has the Seattle burnt his radar? We don't know. I haven't seen it go off in chat. I don't know if you have during this replay. Andy's asking again and again, help, help, help. But no joy from the Seattle. Guys, if a destroyer is in a position, and you're in a position whereby you can take out one of the enemy's destroyers like this, with with the, such a capable ship as the Seattle and the Fletcher in a pair in here, use them. Make use of the actual skills. Andy is asking for Hydro. He's, he's, in, he's indicating that he's asking the Seattle for Hydro. Nothing. Not a single sausage. Seattle is now turning, heading back this way. So... You know, Andy's kind of left hanging here. What does he do? Does he push down the middle? Does he hold his location? Does he does he head back to the decap to help those guys? What you know, what what should he do? Um, you know, when you've got to play, when you've got somebody on your team who 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 has done this, it kind of doesn't make sense. Of course, we don't know if this guy's only just got the Seattle, so he's not entirely sure. He might not be running raid on his. He might have a spotter playing for all we know. Maybe he just. Maybe he's chat banned and can't answer. We don't know. Obviously, remember, I say it time and again when I'm playing the game. You don't know what's going on behind a player's username. So, you know, we can be anything we want to be. But, you know, just be kind at the end of the day. It's the easiest thing to do and it's the one with the most value. Andy, though, is eyeing up a very big, big fish at the other end there. Uh, the Masashi, who is pushing slowly... Um, to keep his crossfire on the Freddy de Gross there. The concern for Andy is, as you can see, RPF is telling him there's something in front of him, potentially around this outcrop. So, he starts to make his way forward. And I think Andy's expecting to actually engage the Jutland behind this outcrop of rock in the middle of uh, two brothers. However, the Jutland is suddenly spotted right in front of our ZF-6, and unfortunately for our ZF-6, that's going to prove quite fatal to the amount of HP he's got. Engine boost activated. Because unfortunately, Jutland versus ZF-6, Jutland wins. And he makes the decision then to push forward to uh, put some pressure on CCAP and have a look at what we can do about this Musashi. So, he's pushing forward. Um, now, for me, it's a little bit of a misplay, potentially, but not in a bad way. So as he's pushing forward, he gets spotted by the Masashi. Smoke generator started. The Masashi's starting to turn and run away. And he's popped his smoke screen. He's also popped his boost so he can jockey forward quite quickly. Now as he goes forward, he, he then slows down, drops his torpedoes, Waits, then aims very short. Now that second set, I would have waited and fired further back with the other ones. Rightly, wrongly, I don't know. Um, but might have done more damage and maybe taken the Masashi out. As it is, he still does a butt ton of damage to the Masashi. Get some nice gunshots on the Alsace that's coming in. There's the first torpedo hit and the first flood and incapacitation. That's followed up by another two. Yep, there we go. Two tops, another flood, another ring cap. Three torpedoes, a flood and an ring cap. And you see the damage starts to tick. So that indicates that that Masashi is just letting the flood tick. It's not a bad thing at all. Remember, floods 27 seconds or so, and it is healable damage. So if you're in a battleship, just try and keep an eye on that. 
and don't fat finger as you, as you see me do on stream quite a bit. Andy now heads back to help the team there. He's, uh, he's caused enough mayhem down there and he's taken the opportunity to run away and uh, get away from that position. As you see, his RPF is still turning in there, his ship is behind him. So that's probably going to be the Masashi I would expect. We'll have to see if it is. He's now around the corner, so he can't be spotted by anything coming up there. As it is, the Riker's radar, 12 kilometers, shot racing, does highlight the fact that the Jutland is pushing up behind him, coupled with the Alsa. We've got a Lepanto pushing in on our team's Izimo there. Our Izimo's making a little bit of a dangerous play here by turning away and does pay for it quite heavily there by taking a lot of the enemy Izimo shells in his broadside. Lepanto's still edging forward, so Andy is going to drop one set of torpedoes. He's then going to avoid the island. He's then going to avoid the middle island here and beach him, which does mean that he gets spotted by the Lepanto. And he's going to drop another set of torpedoes. Because he's got spotted, he pre-drops them slightly further back than the aiming reticle does. As you know, when you're playing your battleships, the first thing you normally do when you see a destroyer and think, right, torpedoes in the water, cut power. Slow the ship down so they go across your bow. Um, and as you can see, the Lepanto is actually pulling a turn to the right as well to, uh, to turn away. There's the torpedoes. Three with two floods on the Lepanto. Can he get the Lepanto? What do we think? Has he got it? And there we go. Right, his first kill of the game, and he's on 157,000 damage. Nearly 158,000 damage already. And that's just the first kill of his game. So a really, really strong showing for the Fletcher so far. His RPF <clears throat> is telling him that that Jutland and Alsace combination are coming through the middle, and they are the nearest ships to him. Nearer than the Uzimor, that's almost 5 point six kilometers away from him and nearer than the Masashi. A really nice set of predictive torps coming up here from Andy as well. As you can see, the Uzimo has turned away and he's looking to push into the cat where Andy is pretty much holding a big white flag saying, Woohoo, I'm here. Because you know the Uzimo captain can see something's in the cap, something's capping. He's gotta come back and defend. This you know us take us putting the defense on this cap means that they're not taking points in. He gets spotted, he pops the smoke, he slows down. The smoke is going to save him in two ways here because number one, the Masashi down there can get, is in secondary range and the Uzimo was opening up as well. The Uzimo captain has slowed down quick enough that he's only going to take two, but he doesn't get an incapacitation and a flood. He's damage conned, so Andy now goes to guns. Any fires that he can get on this Uzimo are going to stick. Smoke screen set. So, again, the Fletcher, it's a really solid tier 9 destroyer. It's what a destroyer should be overall the nations. It's got reasonable guns. It's got reasonable torpedoes. It's got a reasonable amount of HP. It's a jack of all trades, but not a master of anything, if anything really. But it's a, it was one of the most prevalent destroyers during World War II, as we said in the history section of, of, this, of this video. And as a result, it's... It's pretty faithfully modelled here in game. There we go, we've got a couple of fires burning on the Izimo. There's the high calibre, there's the damage ticking away. Now he does launch some torpedoes and I would have held onto this second set rather than firing them, but he does fire them. Um, I would have, I would prefer to hold on to them for the Masashi that we know is pushing up from the other end. Um, we know we've got a very quick wheel of about a minute, so it's not it's a bit of a gamble. As it is, his first set does actually sink the uh, Izimo by putting it on a flood and he gets sunk by that one tick of a flood. Um, but it does put him in position now whereby he's got to wait 40 seconds for these torpedoes. Um, our Riga has taken out the Alsace, leaving just the Jutland and the Masashi. Now, Andy is bow on with the Masashi. He's right in front of him. As you can see, his RPF is telling him. And uh, when he pops out, it's uh, hands to brown alert. Hands to brown alert. He's right there. The Masashi opens up and takes quite a chunk of damage. Um, remember, destroyer versus battleship, especially these big 460mm guns. 
He's still going to wait for these torpedoes. So he's he's jockeyed his throttle a little bit. He's down to three quarters and then puts up to full again. He's waiting for the torpedoes to load before he swings out. Because if he swings out, he's liable to take it right in the neck. But how many tops can we hit? Three torpedoes. Getting the Masashi down to 10k. However, the, dam the Masashi smacks the damage repair button. Max the uh, heal button as well, and he's healing that away. But what a great game there by Andy in the uh, Fletcher. 256,885 damage. We're going to have a look at the post game stats, um, and we'll have a bit, bit of a summary as well following this now. But I just want to say a big thank you to Andy for letting me use that replay. Great game. Well played, buddy. GG. So, guys, what a replay here. Great, great work by Andy. Shame at the end there, but Masashi 460 beats, beats Fletcher 127s, I'm afraid. But, guys, a huge amount to take away from Andy's play there in the game. Great map awareness. Great thinking about and moving in locations. And asking your teammate for help. Simple little things, guys, that you can all pick up and apply to your gameplay in Destroyers. And a really nice look that no matter what tier from tier four upwards you can apply to your gameplay in destroyers so thank you andy for that showcase and cheers for the replay mate what about the fletcher herself and the usdd line well from the clemson through the mayhem the farragut the benson and to the fletcher they're all the same kind of ballpark they all have the same flavor the premiums that are available, the Monaghan um, and the Kid, all have the same flavour. Really, really, really nice gunboats. Usable torpedoes from the Benson onwards, not before though. But the gunboat ethos does still come through. The Fletcher is kind of the crossover ship where it's just the sweet spot, I think. You've got the torpedoes, you've got the guns, you've got the concealment, you've got the health. It's got everything just gelling together really nice. And like we said... She's a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And for that reason, she's just a really nice, comfortable ship to play. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for watching the replay. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, um, like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube stuff to help me. That would be brilliant. We are trying to grow the channel, as you know, um, and I do have some milestones. There'll be a post in the comments below that'll tell you what we're trying to do. And I'd really appreciate if you could help us with that. Anyway. Have a great time, guys. Thanks very much, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.